first thing I want to start with is what everyone imagine. You know, the first thing is that when people look for health or um, look to cure disease or if you go to a doctor, you have problems X, Y, Z. And what I want you to know is that, you know, those things are resolvable. I mean, we are now achieving results where people are completely cured. And what I want you to first realize is that that is a possibility. You can be completely cured of those So again, uh, so the first idea is to imagine no suffering, joy, peace, love. This is all the time. This is a constant state that you can be in. or even having done the trial. Over 130 centers were in the trial. 
why didn't they interview any of us or any of the people in the study or Dr. Lau as you did it? I mean, at least he's the, you know, the principal investigator or any of the other doctors that were at the investigators meeting. Nothing. I haven't seen one of all the articles I've seen that were published the next day. I haven't seen one article where any of the people who did the study or our chelation experts were interviewed. I think it is shameful that when you have delivered the Hippocratic Oath, which we all do at the end of our training, where you swear you will protect with life in front of you, and then you omit evidence, you omit the truth about things that can actually help, that it is disgusting to me. I'm disgusted. A lot of the, the articles immediately come out, you know, lesson learned. What is that? What about 26% benefit? You know, no articulation message rings through. Why is that the conclusion of a study that shows a 26% benefit? Reduce death, reduce heart attacks, reduce hospitalizations, reduce surgeries, reduce stroke. And then you write that, that important, you know, cardiovascular business. Gee, I think that could have something. <laughs> And while well, I'm not totally here, I'm not walking with oxygen, and I can, and I can go uh, a reasonable distance now that I couldn't go before. So uh, it's just a matter of time before I'm going to finally free and be able to breathe again, like some golf. So um, this is our clinic here uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, we provide a complete uh, healing environment. There's basically a three bedroom uh, guest house where patients can stay. And uh, during, if they stay a week or two weeks or three weeks, and we provide all the modalities you'll see here uh, for healing. And we've seen amazing things. So like I said, the movie, uh, the first book, Healing Heart Disease with Chelation Therapy, I did bring some copies if someone wants them. And then we just released two weeks ago the 30-day blood pressure cure, um, and that's available online. So what am I going to talk about? So just who we are, uh, how we help. Originally, when I was a resident here in uh, Mount Sinai, we developed. I did the original research for what became the South Beach Diet. Actually, Angelique thought of the name South Beach Diet, and uh, so that was an interesting story. How we uh, became involved with TAC the largest chelation study, and how the book and movie happened, and then we'll go into the holistic treatment program, which is uh, what is holistic medicine, how we find what's wrong, and that's the biggest thing. When you can find the cause of what's bothering, or what's wrong, um, that's your chance for a real curing to occur. Uh, just some of the stuff I've done. So TAC was a $30 million 10-year uh, study, uh, 134 centers. Original co-developer of the South Beach Diet, and all this other stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, so South Beach Diet, uh, the story on that is, um, so Arthur Agustin, uh, Dr. Agustin was the head of the Echo Lab, and uh, Dr. Lamas was head of uh, cardiology. And one morning, we were sit they, were all, they all had big, giant uh, pot bellies. And uh, they were on Atkins. So I don't know if you remember back in about 95, 96, Atkins was this whole big thing. So um, they were on it. So we were sitting, we went to the cafeteria, and the only chair, that, the only table available was, uh, was a table that was right next to the cashier. So everybody who paid looked at us because we were the first table there. And here's Dr. Lamas and Dr. Agassi, and they're eating cheese omelets and bacon and <laughs> all this stuff. And everyone's like, how can you guys be eating that? You guys are cardiologists. And so after 20 minutes of that, they came over. So they looked at me like, Roy, why don't you go to the library and find out, and this is before internet, find out what do we know about Atkins research? 
and there was actually very little on it. So we designed a study, a small crossover study, where we put patients on the American Heart Association diet. Uh, we put patients on, we didn't want to use Atkins, because Atkins was zero carbs, and American Heart Association diet was 65% carbs. So we thought that was too much of a difference. So all we did was put it right in the middle, 37% carbs. And that's how we came up with the South Beach diet. And we showed that the key to cholesterol and um, all the other parameters we followed was if you could lose the weight. So however you can lose the weight, that's really what's going to work. And that's what we showed. Tell the story not. Uh, the story on tact. Um, so I was completely, besides the thing I did with the South Beach diet, I was completely conventional cardiology trained. Um, I wasn't even against alternative medicine. I didn't even really know it existed at all. It was just, just no knowledge of it. And um, actually, Angelique's uh, uncle was going to come to the first uh, chelation meeting here in Fort Lauderdale. And they were like, well, they were going to go to Fort Lauderdale for three days. So did I want to go? And I thought, well, I can work for three days. I can go to Fort Lauderdale for three days. I'll go to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> so I went, and uh, I'm sitting at a big, you know, it's like a thousand people there. And I'm sitting at, the, at a table at, the, at a lunch conference, at one of the lunch presentations. And I look over, and there's Dr. Lama sitting there. And I look, I'm like, what are you doing here? There's no cardiologist at the chelation meeting. He goes, what are you doing here? I go, no, I came with Angelique's uncle. He goes, oh, I had a patient ask me about uh, chelation, and I said what well, we always say, oh, it doesn't work, it's quackery. But then I really thought about it. When I looked into it, there really wasn't good research on it. And what Dr. Lamas is, is really a trialist. He can set up mega trials. He did the first study on dual chamber pacemakers, the first study on ACE inhibitors. So from that first meeting, um, Dr. Lamas designed the trial, uh, which became TACT, and because I was the only cardiologist he knew, we basically hired my uncle to come over, and he's the one who taught me how to do chelation, and then for the chelation meeting, I was the one who taught everybody else how to do the actual chelation protocol, even though there were people in the audience that have been doing it for like 35 years. <laughs> so, um, the biggest thing I want you to know about TAC is the results. Whenever you see an article in the newspaper or the TV, they don't mention the results. They talk about the methods because they don't want you to know the truth. And the truth is, these are the results. Chelation plus vitamins, 26% improvement versus standard therapy. This was not a placebo trial. This was standard therapy after a heart attack versus standard therapy plus chelation. And that's not often, you know, people don't get that. So on top of the best we can do now, you had 26% improvement overall, death was reduced 7%, heart attacks 23%. Uh, let me just give you, an, uh, so you can understand what those numbers mean. A 1% difference will get a drug approved by the FDA. If you have a heart attack right now and you go to the hospital, they'll inject you with a drug that breaks clots, a clot-busting drug. That drug was approved on a 1% difference of improvement. So for us to show 26%, it's a huge difference. Hospitalizations reduced. In diabetics, that was the most help group, 39% reduction in events. That's a huge number. For example, aspirin for heart attacks only has an 11% benefit. Here we're showing 39%. Heart surgeries were reduced by 19%. This was actually the largest group health as far as numbers. Now the problem with this is every hospital, I don't know if you know, but every medical center in the United States is fueled, the money engine is bypass surgery. So anything that would reduce the main money making portion of a hospital, they're not gonna really like, except unless you're the patient. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, strokes were also reduced 23%. So again, TAC, $31 million was sponsored by the government, so there was no bias, 10 years, double blind, randomized. Remember too, for years, people did chelation, and it was always, oh, show me the study, show me the study. Now we show them the study, and they still don't want to do it. <laughs> um, what is chelation? So people are not familiar with it. Chelation actually means claw from the Greek. Um, what it does is that molecule pulls heavy metal toxins, especially lead, out of your uh, cells where they're stored, and it's eliminated during the urine. 
Um, there's different chelators for different uh, toxic metals. So for example, DMSA is better for mercury, EDTA is better for lead. Um, the tax trial study EDTA, and EDTA is an FDA-approved drug for lead removal. If you have lead toxicity right now, and you go to any hospital in the world, they will give you EDTA chelation, exactly as we used in tax. Uh, so what's in the bag? So a chelation is a mixture of things. There's water, EDTA again is the main molecule that pulls it out. Magnesium, vitamin C is converted by your adrenal glands to cortisol, which is the fuel so you're able to remove the toxins, bicarb and B vitamins. So again, the main thing I want to tell you, the results. Every article you see on chelation, they won't put the results. So you need to know the results. And it's completely safe. It's actually safer than Tylenol. So again, the book. <laughs> Actually, the first book I sold on the left there. <laughs> and the movie. So the story in the movie is so I went to the meeting in uh, the American Heart Association meeting. So there's 19,000 cardiologists in the audience. And I do not know the results. We've been working on this for 13 years. And Dr. Lamas is the only one who knows, and he's not allowed to tell anybody. So they start putting the slides. And finally, you get to the main slide, and it shows you know 26% benefit. And I'm like so excited, sitting in the front row. I turn around, and nobody else reacts <laughs> to what this is. And then the president of the American Heart Association comes up and says, "Well, these results are preliminary. We cannot recommend chelation at this time." So I was pretty upset about that, <laughs> about that combination of things. So when I got back, there's actually sort of a path meeting in uh, Santa Fe, where all the alternative people get together uh, on Tuesday. So I, I had just gotten back Sunday from the American Heart Association meeting, and I just said what I just said, and there was a film producer in the audience, and she walked up to me at the end, and she goes, I want to make a documentary film about this. And that's actually how the, how the movie came, uh, happened to happen. So that's kind of So, here, we'll shift gears a little bit. What I'm about to tell you, I like to make a joke. It's like it's almost like if I was Christopher Columbus, and you all believed the world was flat. And I was now going to try to convince you that I know it looks flat, but it's really round. <laughs> and you know, I often wonder what it must have been like for him. Because anyone who looks out over the ocean can see it's flat. So how hard was it for him to actually convince you know, people that this could really happen. And I sort of want you to think of that as, you know, some of the things I'm not gonna tell you that we found and that we use ourselves because it's almost that strong of a paradigm shift. So what happened to me? So like I said, I was a normal, quote unquote, cardiologist at Mount Sinai. Um, I'd always had a, so just for myself, um, so my father was, uh, had gone to medical school in Mexico. He, that's my dad over there on the left. So he finished four to six years. And since I have no conscious memory of ever wanting to do anything else than be a doctor. Since I was little, anyone asked me I was going to be a doctor. And it was because my dad hadn't been able to finish medical school that, uh, you know, that I sort of picked up the mantle for him. And like I said, I practiced, you know, completely traditional cardiologists. I put pacemakers, I put stents. And um, on a certain Easter, um, I was sitting with my dad, and I'd always sort of held a grudge about not being able to really have a choice as to what I wanted to do in life. I was grateful to be a doctor, but I'd always held that grudge a bit. And that day sitting with him, it was Easter Sunday, we were at, I don't know if you all remember the Sinesta Hotel, we were right on the ocean, there were harps playing, and I was sort of looking at my dad with my whole family sitting there, and I thought, wow, you know, it was incredible, because he, he didn't have that much money. He worked with Eastern Airlines, and he sacrificed for at least five years so I could go study. And in that moment, I had this massive shift of like letting go of all that grudge and suddenly having all this gratitude for him. And in that moment, this whole thing sort of opened up. Now, 
I want you to appreciate that at that time, I did not know what the word chakra meant, okay? I knew nothing about vitamins. I was like, yeah, one a day, right? That was all I knew. So from that moment, I had this massive shift. Um, when that shift occurs to you, and I hope it will occur to everybody one day, um, it's difficult to adapt to everything you normally do. So I actually ended up, uh, it became difficult to work, and you just have an intense love of everything. Everything, it's like, imagine it's black and white, and then it's color. And because it was becoming difficult to work, I ended up, uh, there was a, we had a teacher we knew, and she said, well, I can help you. I know what happened. And what she explained to me happened, I didn't understand at the time, but she said your third chakra opened, and you had all this sort of uh, access to information, but it's unstable, because you should open through your seventh chakra, not your third. So she said, I can help you, I just need to see you. And she came out, and I said, where are you? She goes, I'm in Austria. I go, okay, I'll come out to Austria. She goes, no, I'm leaving to Austria tomorrow to India. I'm like, I don't wanna go to India. <laughs> She's like, no, no, you'll love it, you'll love it. There's also this guy, that you'll find interesting, he's a doctor uh, in India who's combined, he's Oxford trained, he knows Ayurveda, and he has this whole spiritual thing. He'll be interesting to you. So there on the left, you can see that's Babaji. So if any of you read the autobiography of a yogi, um, he had a teacher who had a teacher who had a teacher who then had the avatar Babaji, and that was actually the first person I met, which is you know amazing. I didn't know anything about anything, and I didn't believe anything about anything. <laughs> But he had the ability, he can, he'll, you know, you meet him, he can tell you all about your life just off the bat. He can know what's wrong with people just as they walk in. Somebody would walk in from the West, he'd go, oh yes, you have spine, your uh, L3 disc disease. And then, then he goes, look, show me the x-rays. And then you'd see the x-rays. So I didn't believe any of that, but I had the experience of seeing that. And that was really where everything sort of, sort of started for me. Um, what's the point? Who cares? Why do we just, just do conventional medicine? The problem with that is that conventional medicine doesn't work. There are millions of death a year, deaths a year that are preventable. And here you get you know, split up by groups. What people don't realize, let's say you're on a statin and you're on an aspirin or you're on a beta blocker. If you're a perfect patient and you're taking all these medications, you're still going to have a 76% event rate at five years. That means at the end of five years, 76% of the people taking the perfect medicines will have a bad thing happen. And worse, at 10 years, it's 100%. So, you know, if conventional medicine worked, I would still be doing that. It's just, it doesn't work. So who really cares about you? Actually, no one. <laughs> really. Not the insurance companies, not the government, not the hospitals, only you. And that's a big shift. You have to, it, no one wants to do this, but you really do have to accept that the only person who knows everything about you is you. And you're the one, but the beauty of it is that the power is within you to heal. But I can help a little bit. So number one, cholesterol does not cause heart disease. <laughs> Since the last time I was here, or I guess the first time I was here, a lot of books have come out. Um, the latest is Dr. Sinatra's The Great Cholesterol Myth, but just lots and lots of information. Really nice is The Statin Nation. That, it's a movie, it's only 60 minutes long. They did an excellent job of putting together the whole history of how they invented this entire thing to get your money. Like you said here, 29 billion reasons to lie about cholesterol. It's just the money, it's just, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's, you know. So here's some of the things we can deal with. Um, my favorite is the last one, what I call Dr. House Diseases. I have people come in with a little suitcase full of charts where they've seen 20 doctors. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're able to find the cause of, you know, where things came from. And that's, you know, what I find the most rewarding. Thank you. 
sure about medication. Definitely, my health has improved greatly. Far more vital than I have in the past. And I don't think we could go wrong by using this program. Anybody, I think, would benefit from it. I know I have. That's pretty cool. So what? Uh, so you know, what are the different types of medicine? So they've used different labels. So Western, traditional, sort of your normal medicine. Alternative is where you look at uh, separate things that may help. Uh, com complementary is also a similar idea. Integrative is really putting it all together, traditional and alternative, and then holistic brings in the whole spiritual part to the equation. Um, the first thing to remember is you're not a disease. You. Our mind will reference our diseases. It will look for where disease is. I always tell people, imagine you, you have gout, but you don't. So you, unless you do, but most people don't have gout. And you never think about pain in your toe because you don't have that reference. If you did, you would have gout. But every disease is like that. Whatever you have, you're gonna reference. When you first wake up, you don't know who you are, you don't remember where you are. So you reference your story, you reference your location, and then you start referencing your diseases. Like, oh yeah, I have this, I have that, and you start looking for it. And that's part of how it manifests. So the first, so we go body, mind, spirit, the body. Uh, toxins, again, is a big key. Getting rid of lead, getting rid of mercury especially. When you're toxin free, your body will pretty much run as it should. The second is toxins will, uh, affect hormones. What you eat is, of course, critical. Exercise, fitness, posture, breathing, and sleep are all important parts of sort of the physical things. Then your mind, your mind is sort of what runs the show. So again, there's always underlying issues. And all these different points that we, uh, we try to address. Now, a thing I just found fascinating, there are cases of multiple personality disorders, okay, where a person has two distinct personalities sharing a body. One of the person, when they're in one of the personalities, one will have diabetes and the other won't. I mean, how much, what better uh, example of how strong our mind is than that, where just based on your, that person's thoughts, one personality will have diabetes and the other won't. The other is they'll carry two separate pairs of sunglasses, uh, eyeglasses. So depending on which personality they're in, each personality has a different prescription for their glasses, just to see how strong your mind is. So spirit, again, one of the key things is helping others. When you're helping others, you can't think of yourself, which is always a good thing. <laughs> and the second thing is finding your purpose. Now, the ego is interesting. <laughs> So, the, you know, I like the little devil and the little angel. So that's sort of another way to look at it. The other thing is realize your conscious is only one aspect of you. There's the subconscious that actually runs a lot of the motivation for what you want to do. And when you're able to reach those levels, you're able to find some keys to healing. Real patients. <laughs> so what are you know what's sort of the way I'm approaching it these days? So the first is I always say there's the traditional area. So we'll go over what medicines you're taking, what the doses are, you know, what prescriptions you're on. The second is the holistic model where we'll look at toxins, hormones, and then the third is really energy. And energy is really what's sort of the new thing to get you to heal fast. So that's good. 
So how do we assess you? So we really look at you close. We do all kinds of testing, as a lot of you are my patients, you know. <laughs> so we look at all kinds of things. So here I'm echoing, I'm ultrasounding my son. And we do stress tests, bone densitometry, all kinds of analysis. Uh, we do labs. Again, the big lab we like to do is you know, mercury, lead, toxins are the big thing, thyroid, cortisol. You know, those are really the, the keys to as far as the physical uh, healing. Um, new tests, so saliva is definitely the best test for hormone testing. Checks cortisol, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Toxin testing looks at 20 of the most common heavy metals. Uh, especially lead and mercury, cadmium, arsenic. Uh, food sensitivity, sometimes you think you're eating something good and it's actually not good for you in particular. For years I had a rash on my face on one side and it turned out to actually be a broccoli allergy. So broccoli is an excellent food, just not for me. Uh, we can actually measure intracellular vitamins. A lot of times people are like, why do I have to take all these vitamins? You can actually measure your vitamin levels and see what you actually need. Um, I also highly recommend, there's a new test, $99 online, uh, it's called 23andMe. It'll give you your complete DNA genome, also looking where your ancestors came from, all kinds of interesting information. And then the latest that I'm doing is a lot of brain testing, we're using EEG, seeing as vital signs and measuring neurotransmitters. So our approach is basically toxins, hormones, diet, exercise, head and heart. So these are the tools we use to uh, help people heal. So detoxification is definitely a big part of it. And what we call, putting it all together, we call it the Jumpstart Program. So we'll go over what that is. That's IV therapy, EWOD, heart math, ECP, sauna, biocharger. John, I got crystal bed, massage, and counseling. So the IVs, uh, they do numb your skin first so it doesn't hurt. We use a 26 gauge catheter, which is the thinnest you can use. Um, we'll do the chelation. Sometimes we'll do IV glutathione, especially in people who have Parkinson's and high-dose